How you been? Make it do what it do. Definitely doing that, good brother. Definitely doing that. Yeah, we were just talking about that down in uh, Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let Biggs know we ready on the road. Yeah. Just keep grinding, bro. Just keep grinding. You never know who's watching, who's paying attention, and when they're in a position to just. Pull the button. You know what I mean? Push the button. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you're on mic three. That's mic two. Let me just do a quick sound check real quick. Yeah, yeah. Make sure they can hear you. Yeah. We should be good to go there. We should be good to go there. Mic check, mic check. That's good. That's good. <clears throat> and where we need to come? Let's get this joint started. Make sure we are good on, what am I looking for? Here, here, here. It should be nonstop, bro. Got in town at like five this morning. Went over to the high school, did what I had to do over there. Mm -hmm. Got over here, back on it, man, back on it. <clears throat> And that make sure that go through. All right, there we go. So we good there, we good there. We are live online, and we come here. Oh shoot, we already here. I'm gonna do that. We already here. Boom, boom, here it is, here it is. We are back. We are back for another super dope edition of the, o of the OMG On My Grind Live interviews. We are here today, man, with this this guy right here, man. This is a, a superstar, man, superstar. He's the winner of the Media Famous Showcase, first place winner. Um, been doing his thing here in the city for a long time. Definitely earning his stripes as a go. Shout him out, SK. SK, the villain in the building. What up with you? What's up? What's up? Dude, what's going on, baby? <laughs> you know I got to make the, make the makeshift crowd noise because you always deserve a standing ovation whenever you're in the building, my brother. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. My man, I appreciate you coming through today, man. So we just want to chop it up a little bit, man. Just let the people know, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, what you do, you know, why you do what you do, how you do what you do. Um, you know, we in it. This, you know, podcast is going to run for a half hour. The interview itself is going to run live on for an hour. We're live on uh, Instagram. We're live on Facebook. You can go live on your page if you want uh, people to tap in. Yeah. And yeah, that's what we doing, man. Yeah, that's SK TV, man. I'm live, man. Right now, grind mode. I do this shit every day. I grind every day. That's what I do. I'm in grind mode every day. Shout out grind mode. Shout out Dion, man. Y'all are making a lot of big moves in the city and outside of the city. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Get in touch with him. You'll see. Tap in. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. But this is about you, man. Because yeah. you're making a lot of big moves inside the city and outside the city, too. Thank you. And been doing so. Um, and it shows in your in your, in your your talents, man. Um, the, the music that you're making, your showmanship, your stage presence. Like, you just, you're just the total package, man. How long you been involved in music? I've been involved in music since I was six years old. Okay, talk to us. Oh, man. I've been doing music. It started off because, uh, you know, back in the day, you know... Uh, my mom was raising six kids, so 
and she had to go to work and she was going to school okay. at the same time trying to better herself. So I didn't see her. You know, my mom, my dad was locked up. So um, one day, my mom, uh, when I was six years old, she she wanted to uh, basically record what we was talking about or what we was doing. You know what I'm saying? So okay. she brought us a tape recorder. And at the time, my brother was making beats all all the time. He was already he was already in it, making beats in his head. Okay. Right all the time, making beats on the wall, everything. So he was making beats on a washing machine, and I was rapping, and me and my sister was rapping. Uh oh. And um, we used to record our little you know our little raps or whatever the the you know mm -hmm. little stuff, little songs, and then let my mom hear when she got out of work about twelve at night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when she got home about twelve thirty, you know, I mean, we used to let her hear the songs, and she was like, oh, "Okay, yeah, y'all doing something, you know what I mean?" Making some things happen. That made me feel like, okay, that made my mom proud, so I wanted to keep doing it. Okay, I mean? okay. So how old were you when you recorded your first actual song, like in the studio? And my first actual song I recorded when I was um, seven years old. Okay, seven. Wow, that's early in life. Yeah. How'd that work? Uh, basically, um, there was a group of, of Marjorie. Okay. Um, Called uh, two one, but we go with the Shad Town Boys. It was like me, Menno, Quad, a couple of us, uh, Bull, um, Coogs. It was this couple dudes, older dudes that was older than me. You know that was rapping and they was doing their own thing. And it was like, yeah, little Steve want to get you in the studio. Da, da, da. Okay. And I, you know, I started rapping with them, recording with them, and then um, I, you know, that was like my first little song going with them. And then after that, I wanted to record my own song. Uh huh. So I got in touch with um. One of my uncles and stuff, and uh, he took me to record my first song. It was called Back to School. Back to School. And you made something age appropriate. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> That's what's yeah, up. Because yeah. we got some little youngsters that be sending music in on the My Two Cents, man. They be murdering everything. You know what I mean? 14, 15 years old, dead in a block in the first two bars. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, everybody died. Yeah, everybody <laughs> did. There's nobody listened to the music. And it came through and wet everything up. So that's super dope that you was able to make the, you know, make the music. And, you know, shit just, I mean, it, it definitely resonates that it lives in your blood, man. Like, it, it lives in your blood. I've been for around sure, you sure. on, on multiple different fronts, man. And it's just like, you're always ready. Right. Talk to us about how, how important it is as an artist to just be prepared. Well, being prepared is the number one thing. It, it, it's, it's, it's more than being having the confidence that you are who you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You are who you are as an artist. So you having the confidence to come up there and say, you know, I'm going to fuck this shit up. Right. In your mind, you got to have that confidence also in your ability to do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You win everything. It comes a lot to be an artist. People will be thinking like, oh, you just go up here and rap. No. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm glad that you're speaking on that because you're absolutely right. A lot of people have that misconception that as long as you can go in the booth and rap over some beats, that you did it. You know what yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm one song away. So, nah. talk to us. No, nah, I mean, one, you gotta have music that people go on the field. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And all music ain't all about Shooting up, shooting this person up, killing this person, da da da. Some people just want some feel good music. You right. Know what I'm some things that's going to make them feel good or make them feel sad or get in touch with their feelings. Music's all about emotion and feelings. So you got to be able to get in touch with the people. You feel me? So if I'm going to sit here and make a song, if I'm any young artist right now, I'm trying to go make a song, I'm not going to go make a song because my hood is going to love it. Or I'm not going to go make a song because. Um, you know, my, my family's gonna love it. I'm trying to make it because the world's gonna love it. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's how you should be looking at when you sit here trying to make something out here. And that's dope that you, that you mentioned that because that was gonna be one of the questions. Like, what is your process in regards to making your music and how do you go about doing that? So just knowing, like, so when you approach it, you approach it with the audience in mind. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and let's talk about, like, your transition from, you know, being a youngster making music. What are some of the, the, the key elements that you learned in that process, like from, you know, your youth into now? Well, what helped me a lot was um, I didn't cuss when I was growing up rapping. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that helped me a whole lot because it taught me to be more, you know, it, it taught me that like cussing was just like an excuse not to say something intelligent. Nice. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So I'm always saying, so I'm, my metaphors and my bars is coming more from, you know, being intelligent, mm -hmm. being this hood, and you know where I'm from, right? And that, right. you know what I'm saying? Even though that, that's a part of me, I just don't, you know, it just accept that and be like, oh, that's it. That's right. Kind of thought of that bar first, that's going to be the bar. No, I thought mm -hmm. of 30 bars before that. You can ask OT Kelly, he's been in the studio with me, he know how it work. I thought of 30 hopefully before we came up with Selfish. Nice, nice. You know what I mean? Literally, he'll tell you. 
That's that's super dope. Um, because one of the things that I try to get artists to understand is like the importance of like having a process. You know what I'm saying? Not just going in just because you wrote it in your phone, um, but or or you know on paper or you memorize it. However it is, you come up with your lyrics, but also perfecting the enunciation, the sound, the vocals, the whole nine. Because a lot of people don't really understand the relation between your voice as an instrument correct, and the music that you're rapping over, of course, is instruments, man. Um, talk to us about how you learned that that important process. So that important process came from my dad um, recording with him. When he got out of jail, the first thing he did was put me in the studio. Okay. He found out about his kids rap. Like, you know, I never did. My dad did music or was a producer. Shout out my dad, Mr. Yago, R. P. my dad. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Legend in the city. Absolute so, legend. You know he produced the first song I ever rapped over, bro. See, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and people don't know, like, my dad is really the GOAT of this whole thing. Man. When, when Wiz was first doing his thing, when S Money was doing their first thing, all these all these artists that, you know, that paved the way, you know, for everybody else to do what they had to do, what they're doing and making the noise they're making now, my right. dad was a part of that. Came through Mr. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And I can remember. He was a Stevie B of his time. Absolutely. Um, I think I was, like, maybe 17, 18 myself, and I was working with a, a company called Dog Em Out. And they were like, all right, man, you got, you got, you got lyrics. We're going we gonna to take you in the studio. So first thing we had to do is get the beat, right? So we went, I think he was living in uh, Turtle Creek. Yeah, yeah. And so we went to the crib. He pulled out the, the drum machine and the keyboard. And he's like, what you got in mind? So I, you know, just was humming some stuff. And he literally took what I was humming and brought it to life. And I was like, oh, I'm going to murder this. And I kind of got into it. But his, his. His spirit was music and very inspirational. So I can feel where you're coming from in regards to like having him as a mentor. Of course, pops the whole nine, but also teaching you the game of the music, man. Right? Yeah, that, how, that played a huge part. Yeah, you know what I'm saying about how man music because he helped. He, he taught me how to bring the feeling into my music. Okay, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and not just just rap. You know what I mean? Some right. people just go up there and they just rap and they blah, 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 but ain't no feeling. No emotion, right? You know what I'm saying? And it's like you said earlier, music is emotional. You know what I mean? Like you people connect to you all based off of how you make them feel. Correct. You know what I mean? How your records make them feel. So that's super dope that you got that game early, man. Um, talk to us about your performances, man. When was the first time you actually hit the stage? And what was that like? Um, the first time I actually hit the stage was up Northview, Northview Talent Show, um, the e uh, ETW. Okay. And um, the first time I hit the stage, you know, uh, honestly, the first time I hit the stage, I, actually the first time I hit the stage, I was dancing and singing Usher. Usher? Yes. Man. I had, um, I had my sister and her two friends, Rita and Lee, shout out Rita, shout out Lee, shout out me, you know what I'm saying? They, they was dancing in the back of me and I was singing Usher. Um, um, what's this? What's the song called? Seven o'clock on the dot. Oh, oh, oh! You went there. Yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, I, I think we came in like fourth place or something like that that first time. Okay. You know what I'm saying, but that wasn't my song or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the next time, me and my sister went up. We did our own song. So was that something they had every year? Yeah. It was okay. Like every year it was okay. a big thing, like up in, in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Nice. So everybody came. Everybody, mom, everybody, grandma there. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it was like. Your big, big thing, you know what I mean? And then um, the next time, me and my sister went the next year, I was like, you know what I mean? Fuck that, we doing our own shit. You know Make it happen. We went to our own song. We went up there and we won. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to show our, I mean, we really talented. Like, we wrote, we wrote this shit. My brother produced this. My dad recorded us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Whole family affair. Right, exactly. That's what's up. That's what's up. And and how was your, how, how did you feel getting a reception from the, the crowd? And you know what I mean? Like, after you won, like, what? Talk to us about what that adrenaline rush felt like. I don't know, man. That, that was like, you know, I, it was like, oh, you know, my hood had my back with the music. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the only thing I regret, though, honestly, is that when I spent the time, I was capitalizing on it, but I didn't capitalize on how I wanted to, not in my in my, in my my hood or my city, because we moved away. Okay, yeah. talk to us about it. We ended up moving to Virginia, and, you know, we was going to be with my dad down there, and we was um, in the studio right next to the Neptunes, working next to the door to them, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? on a daily basis and we was traveling around the country doing music with um my um god dad theory the nice kind of, the theory you know, yeah the, yeah the baby record uh-huh yeah so I was, we was with them we were I mean, part of that, that label that's dope that I mean you were around some some strong individuals bro yeah i know so how do you feel like you didn't capitalize off of it i'm mean, because i i you know when i was doing it you know what i mean because i because I, I, I did i did capitalize on it actually because I, I did I, mean, I can't say i capitalized on it because i did because i did um i was the first person to ever 
throw two concerts in two different schools in Pittsburgh public schools in history. Nice. Created my own concert. Okay. Like the whole school came. Like, you know what I mean? It was last period and the whole period started. That last period was dedicated to me. What to school was that? Columbus Middle School in Allegheny Middle School. That's dope. That's dope. So you convinced the teachers to let you rock out. Yes. Last so period. Shout out Mr. Pipkin. <laughs> shout out Dr. White Taylor. That's super dope. You know, That's super let dope. let me do my thing. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? So. And I, I, you know, and they knew that I didn't, because I let them hear my music, you know, I took it in and I also the pimple bottles, and I was a scholar, so okay. they let me, you know, they let me rock out. That's so, what's yeah. up, and, and having that support is important, man, that's super important, and super dope that the school was able to, you know, I, I feel like that's a, a missing component in the school systems now, it's like, they don't really tap into the kids, they have their own agenda that they're trying to push, but not really tapping into what makes the kids tick. You know right. what I'm saying? The stuff that they're interested in. So that's super dope that you was able to take advantage of that. And, um, you know, talk to us about your transition into, into like, you know, adulthood and, you know, just deciding to take the music more serious. Well, the, the adulthood transition came from um, um, turmoil, you know what I mean? Okay. A lot of things happened. Um, people got in diet, different things, you know, I was in the streets doing a lot of different shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, it has changed for me when um, I was just thinking about like, you know, am I going to waste my talent or am I going to just know and just be this this other side of me that I, you know what I mean? I don't know where it's going to go and it could be anything. Right. I can take this talent and I know what it's going to do and where it's going to take me. I'm saying? So that's where the decision came from. But just, you know. So was it a situation where you had to get to a place where you like 100% believed in yourself or was it just like it was still like the allure of the streets just like tugging you away from, you know, your talents? Yeah, it was a little bit of, a little bit of both. You okay. Know what I'm because um, even though I was talented, I know I was, you know, dope and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, shout out like Asco and um, shout out Poppy, shout out, you know what I mean, um, Raquel, Buddha, Badass. Shout him out. Shout out E Young. Like, People that like was just around me and they just always told me, no, Steve, do your music. You mm -hmm. just can't do your music because you, you hot, bro. Like, you really need to do this shit. So definitely start. Oh, yeah, don't forget MG the motherfucking bag. Bro. MG the bag. I thought she was going to be here. That's why I got the yeah, other chair set up. she was here too. But <laughs> sis, sis got a lot of business going on. We, she got, we got a movie we shooting coming up. You know, Brickell Good Fashion about to come out. That's super so, dope. BG Fashion's about to be a big thing. Mm -hmm. she's doing her and she grinding. She yeah, definitely she grinding put in that work sure. to make that happen. Man. Yeah, so she behind the scenes working right now. Shout out my sis. Super dope, super dope. So, um, you know, at, at some point you decided, like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm building up a nice reputation here, um, but it's, it's necessary for me to transition outside the city. Um, talk to us about how um, you got to the place in your head where, you felt it was necessary to hit that road. Well, what happened was, like, my dad, I was talking to my dad, and um, he was telling me, you know, yeah, son, you dope, but you're not touching it. Everybody's doing the same thing. Every Don't. He told me, like, you don't have to do videos. You don't have to do everything that everybody else is doing mm -hmm. because do what they're not doing. So what they ain't doing is, in my city, is they ain't, reaching out to these other DJs, they're not getting, going to these other cities, performing in all these other cities, and right. giving these DJs they song, promoting. You break your record by the DJs in the club. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? It's not just the internet. The internet's one in a million. People don't understand if you put your money behind marketing enough to where behind a regular label, a radio um, stands if you put it enough behind DJs that they spend your record unless you want to get noticed. Mm -hmm. That's what happened with me. You right. know what I'm saying? So once I did that, you know, I, I just took it on the road like, fuck it, I'm going to every fucking city I can go. And that's what, fuck where it's at. That's what you've been on, bro. Small town, big town, I don't give a fuck how big the show is. There's three people that are still performing. Right. It doesn't matter, 10,000 to 10 people. Right. Matter, I'm still going to be. Doing your thing. Because like I said earlier, man, you never know who's listening, um, who's watching, and who's paying attention, man. Um, and the fact that you, you, you decided to take your music on the road, I think, you know, elevated you in the city as well. Um, because like you said, a lot of people around here don't do it. They find themselves in a hamster wheel doing performing at the same places in front of the same people, doing the same thing, and seem like they come become complacent with just like that hood notoriety or the city notoriety, but not realizing like you're not touching even a fraction of the population. Exactly. So so talk to us about how important it was for you to in, in, in your process in regards to being able to not be that. Well, because I, I always looked at it like this. So, yeah, people know me from freestyling and, and, and you know what I mean, and bell rapping young and, you know, and have a song on the radio young and, and like, you know, doing 
on shows all the time and all that other stuff, but I wanted the world to know me. So when I when I looked at how many people knew me in my city, mm-hmm. I said, yeah, my city know me. Right. You know what I'm saying? But then I looked at how big the world was. I'm like, well, that's a grain of sand to a beach. Right, right. right. I want the beach to know me, not the fucking grain. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I was... I'm sitting there like, fuck it, I'm trying to surf the beach. Where we going? There we go. There we go. And your your, your thought process is absolutely like 1,000% on point when it comes down to tapping in with the DJs. Like I tell people, DJs are the key to the streets. You know what I mean? They they are the key to the streets. And they are the key to the people. And if you got a working DJ that's in the clubs three, four nights a week, Mm -hmm. they're also getting booked in the private sector, you know, weddings, birthday parties, things of that nature. And they rocking with your music. Those just multiple people just hearing your music exactly. on a consistent basis. Exactly. So shout out all the DJs in Miami, Atlanta, Dallas, Houston, um, Phoenix, San Diego, LA, uh, Cleveland, New York. All the DJs that's playing me in, in Virginia and South Carolina, North Carolina. Everybody that's playing me, even the DJs that's playing me in my city. Shout out to all the DJs because that's who's making them. That's who's making your record happen right now. And if people don't understand that, yeah, you could do a thousand videos and get a million streams. It's a thousand, but guess what? There's a three billion people who already did that. Absolutely, absolutely. And and I'm I'm glad that you spoke on that, man, because that's that's super important. Um, just to be able to for for people to understand, like, listen, there is a process. You know what I mean? There's a right way to go about doing this. And I'm proud that you are taking those steps and connecting with people all over the place, the DJs, um, promoters, because I mean, you're getting booked for shows in other cities. Just off of relationships alone. Talk to us about how that came up. Well, that well that came up is literally, and the people don't believe this, and this is the realest shit I could ever tell them. Um, that all my shows, literally, I got booked after I, I I got booked right after I got off the stage. Okay. Literally, like I got like soon as they see me perform, so it's, uh, they wanted somebody else wanted to book me there, book me there, and then also I always had like you know my my, my partner shout out Tizzy. You know what I mean, free Tizzy, that's my man. You know what I mean, that's who I always he booked me up to a lot of different shows and put me on different venues, you know, mm-hmm. to where I probably wouldn't have been on them venues if he wasn't around. So shout out Tizzy too, because he put me he booked me with different connections and different people. He actually put me down with you too. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, man. Shout out Tizzy one time, free man. Tizzy, whole man. up top university. Up top, baby. You know what I'm saying? Free Tizzy, he's been doing this thing, man. One thing I can say about um Tizzy, you know, we had a lot of closed door conversations, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, you know, he, he after we had a couple meetings and you came to, you know, the big meetings that we had and stuff like that, he was like, man, you know, I got all these dudes, like, you know what I mean? And everybody need me to, you know, support them on shit like that. I want to do it. Um, but what do you think? And I told him, my, this is honest to God, on my children, I said, SK's the one, bro. I said, if there's anybody that you're going to put your bag behind and that's going to run with you and grind with you, it's going to be SK. He wants it. He has the passion. He has the knowledge. And he understands what it takes. He's not going to be making excuses for shit not popping off the right way. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I'm not saying that that was the reason why he did anything. I'm just right. letting you know, like, that was my real 100%, like, real assessment of everybody that was in the room and, and what was going to be a smart investment on his part. Right. And just to see that you still carrying a flag, still holding things down mm-hmm. while he's not here. I mean, cause you know, we talk on the phone from time to time, you know, mm-hmm. while he's locked up and I keep telling him like, you know, I stay tapped in, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Right, right. And I'm like, yo, SK still putting in that work. So there's some things that he wants to be able to make shake. And, you know, of course you're going to get those, those yeah. calls when it, when everything um, comes together, man. So again, just shout out to you, bro. Like at the end of the day, man, you are, like the model as, as far as how an artist should move and like like the mentality and attitude that you have like five or five hundred thousand it don't matter I'm rocking out right you know what I'm saying so um you, you signed up for the media famous showcase man um and and uh <laughs> talk to us about that experience <laughs> <laughs> well I think, I think that's something that you need to share yourself. Nah, I, I mean, I, I I signed up, you know, I was thinking, you know, I, actually I was thought I was signing up for something else, you know what I'm saying? And uh-huh. then when I signed up, I'm like, oh, so this is a showcase. And I thought it was just like, you know, some other, something else, you know, going on. I knew some prizes and stuff involved, but I didn't know it was y'all actual event. And right. Da, 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 until I looked on Ticketmaster, I'm like, oh, this is Brian Rose event. Da, da, da. Right. I'm like, all right. And that's why I called you. you mm-hmm. know? I'm, like, I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm going to get, well, I'm going to go ahead, you know what I mean? And then it got canceled because of the, the weather, the weather yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, so he, he rescheduled it. I'm like, all right, so when they go down, I'm going to be focused. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to, you know what I mean? I'm going to try to win. Mm-hmm. So before, you know what I mean? 
So you you had some you had some right. turmoil prior to yeah, it, man. It ain't like that, it was though, an easy situation. That, I was working on my space. You know what I'm saying? I got a, I got a space, Cloud Studios, with with Lee, with my boy Lee. Shout out Lee. I'll lead a ruler on on Instagram. I'll lead a ruler on Facebook. Shout out my bro, my, nice. my business partner with this space. Uh, it's called Cloud Studios in Morocco. I'm out there working on it, and um, I, I'm out there on the roof, and I, I mean, you know, on the ladder, and I fell off the ladder. That's how I ended up breaking my arm. Mm. So I broke my arm prior two weeks prior to this event happening. Right. You get what I'm saying? So I didn't even know if I'm going to be healed up to even enough to even go do it. You know what I'm saying? So luckily, God blessed me enough to be. A strong person, and I got you know, man, I got good blood in me where I can heal fast. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I, I made it. You got that struggle. Wolverine blood. You got that right. Wolverine blood. You know, I ain't gonna lie, I was still in pain, so I popped a, I popped a thirty. Mm -hmm, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So I popped the yerky. I mean, I'm like, I'm here. I'm at the show. Fuck. Right, right. So um, I go on, and you know, I'm performing, and the fucking mic, the fucking cord falls out the fucking mic. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how did this shit happen? And right. I'm still performing. But now I'm in my mind, quick, think quick, boom. So I'm thinking like, okay, old school shit. I'm going to go back, have a DJ run this part back, like scratch it back, and then I'm going to come on in the second verse. Mm -hmm. So while I'm fixing the mic, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So in the meantime, I guess y'all was thinking like, oh, this nigga told him like, no, nah, he knows what I'm talking about. Shut up, DJ Bricks, man, again. Because he, he knew exactly what I was talking mm -hmm. about. You know what I'm saying? Other DJs like Schizo and other DJs would know what I'm talking about. Right, he right. It. So he did it. And I was like, oh, he really did that shit. And I came back and I turned the crowd all the way the fuck up. Mm -hmm. So... And it made it hard for y'all because y'all thought that I was, I, I didn't, you know, I was giving Well, I, 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 unfortunately, I missed the performance. You yeah. know, I wasn't one of the judges. You know, I just coordinated everything, make sure right. everything runs smooth. I missed the performance um, because I had to send a record via email and I didn't have any service in there. So I had to go outside and try to send the email so mm -hmm. Bricks can get the next person's uh, performance and everything because they didn't do what it was they were supposed to do. It was like instructions were easy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we worked through those challenges. So I missed it, but I did hear the deliberation from the judges and they had actually thought that you had quit. Like, because the mic cord went out, you was just on wow. so stop, stop, stop. But then... When you turned around and came back and kicked everything up a notch, it blew them out the water. They were like, "Oh shit! Like this nigga real? Like this yeah. is this is some real shit right here." Yeah. And so when they were doing the deliberations, and I believe my man B Dodds actually filmed it and is putting together a segment about how they came up with the winners and so forth and so on. Because it was a, it was a straight debate. Like they was they was yeah. you know what I mean? And it was no favoritism. It was really just based off of right. What you happened? know what I mean? Yeah. What happened? Right. You know what exactly. I'm saying? And um, you had mentioned like there was a lot of talented people that was performing that night. Yeah. Um, so their job wasn't easy. Right, exactly. <laughs> and so that goes to speak on just the overall, like, just just professionalism and polishes, polishing that you have as an artist to be able to shine under circumstances like that. And for me, I always try to make sure I'm putting the right pieces together. I don't like doing shit half ass. Right. I don't like doing shit janky. That's why I don't do as much as I could, mm -hmm. and I don't get involved in as much as that, that be going on. Um, I try to keep things that the right way. I want to be able right. to provide real opportunities. I don't do this shit just to do it, um, just to have my name out there or whatever the case may be. I want to be able to really help people sustain a career in music and knowing that it's possible as long as certain pieces of the puzzle is together. So having a, a, a Bricks DJ and not like some other DJ that I could have got for a little cheaper or, or somebody that could have done it for free or whatever was mm -hmm. important for something like that for that very right, exactly. reason, that experience. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? He has that experience. And so his ability to, to understand, and it wasn't like you was able to talk to him like, "Hey, right, bro." Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's the middle of the performance, so I can't talk to him. But he knew the sound, so he knew like, "Oh, I got you." You know what I'm saying? Right. He, I gave him the sound. He like, "Oh, he didn't get that first, but he got it the second time." Like, "Oh, yeah, I got you." Here we go. Boom, Boom. and got into it. You know what I'm saying? He did it. You know what I mean? So talk to us about how you felt like after your performance and the rest of the performers went on, and you know, prior to the judges, you know, making their decision. Um, shout out, big dude, because that was because you know, I because big dude and um my man's band. Band man, they 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 did they thing. Them two big niggas, they did they thing on there. They damn sure did. You know what I'm saying? I liked the dumb um the dude. He had the money song. You know what I'm saying? It was a couple. Yeah, other they people finished too, the like second. Too. That's what the argument was because exactly. it was between you and and the dude with the uh, money song. Um. <laughs> yeah, but I already knew though. In my mind, that was gonna be a debate because of the mic. You feel me? Mm -hmm. If the mic didn't drop, I guess there's no debate. No debate. Okay. Okay. Hundred percent. Because I know, for, like how professional I am, and how I'm going, what I'm going to do. Right. You know what I'm saying I know nobody's going to bring this energy I'm bringing right now. Not, not, not like this. Mm -hmm. 
So um, you had made mention in regards to like how you felt like the judging was going to go. Um, oh, yeah, I was thinking that you know when the, when the, when the um, when they mentioned the third place and the second place. I was about to walk out the door. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, they ain't gonna let me win this motherfucker. Oh, this is some bullshit. I'm about to walk out of this motherfucker. I'm about to uh, right. walk out of here, man. And just go ahead and go do something else. Fuck it. And then I, what? So as soon as I as soon as I got up, they pronounced they they announced winner of SKTV. And I was like, what the fuck? There it is. <laughs> there it is. I kind of feel like I kind of feel like that was redemption because you 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 killed that show down in Atlanta. We was down in Atlanta. It was that uh I ain't gonna say it was a town show, it was a showcase. And oh man, you, you showed they- you showed the fuck out. You by far, and I'm not being biased, you by far was the absolute best. Did you see that? It was crazy. Wasn't it? It was crazy. And I had everybody going crazy. That's what I'm saying. I had people that they don't even know my songs. Mm-hmm. They don't even they start singing them and start after this first hook. Right. Like they don't even know me. Right. Like, most of them people don't know me. Man. You know what I'm saying? But they do me because, like, you know. They like his energy, goddamn energy. He, he's turned the fuck up. And Jams, the the the, the records were right. catching. And then when I seen everybody else perform, and I'm like, yo, y'all really went playing slip singers and shit. Like mm-hmm. that shit's crazy. And like, and that's another thing too. You don't you don't rap over your music. You do no, you do a I TV do, track. Yeah, I do a TV track. Like Talk that. to us about how important that is for you as an artist to to make sure you have. And, and just for the record, for those of you who don't know, a TV track. Is the actual professional term for a show tape, all right? right? A show mix, and that's where your lead vocals are off. You might have your ad libs on, you might have your background and, and my right. background turned up a little bit, but it gives you the space to perform your record, not having the record play exactly, <laughs> exactly. while you, you know, just saying over the mic. And that's what I'm saying. When y'all see me performing on live and all that stuff, and y'all see me doing my performances, that's me singing the songs. That's not my song singing the fucking song. That's me singing the song over the, over, over like ad lib tracks, and you know my under back, my background track is turned up, turned up just a little bit so I can hear it. You know what I mean? So I can stay on pace. But other than that, that's me. You know what I'm saying? Maybe on a hook you might hear that's. You know, the record playing with me, you know. Right. But other than that, most of the time y'all hear me, it's only me. Like, you know what I mean? That's really my voice. That's me. That's like, super I dope. Mean, I think, I think I'm it's... I'm not t- auto-tuned out like everybody else. You know what I mean? You hear me, you don't hear my, my songs. don't sound like that. Like, I think it takes, like, 100% courage and belief in yourself to be able to, you know, perform like that. And I think a lot of artists don't... I think it's two things. I think either they don't know... Or they don't have the confidence to be able to like go up there and spit their jams without having um, that music in the background. At what point did you learn that that was like important for you as a performer, as a performing artist, to to incorporate that into your show? Well, my dad always had us doing that. Okay, you get what I'm saying. So when I when I met my dad, you know, it was like music from ninety going north. Let's go. We going in. We going in ten and twenty. You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. right now, like. So he was already putting me deep with like, you know, no, nah, you need to perform like this. And then my uncle DJ Schizo, you know, he always put me on with that too. Like, you know, SK, you need to, you know, you're, you're dope enough, but you don't have to do that. You can just go up there and just do the song. You don't even need the song. You can just do the beat mm-hmm. and just be you. And, you know, you, you know how to make up for your mistakes and not scared to make mistakes. Right. That's where it comes in for artists that to, to don't, to don't want to do that is because they... Scared to make mistakes and they don't know how to make up for mistakes. No doubt. So I'm Hold tight. We're gonna get into part two of this. We're gonna get into part two. We're gonna keep this we're gonna keep this going. We're gonna keep this going. Give me one second. My God. Yes indeed. You're gonna have a two. Alright, so for those of you who was tapped into the part one of the podcast, man, this is part two of the podcast. We got SKTV. We sitting here talking about how um important it was for him to understand the importance of not rapping over his regular songs and getting his TV tracks created. And this man mentioned like some heavyweights that he has in his cab, man. Um, you mentioned Schizo. Is yeah. His, yeah, uncle, uncle, yeah. Man, and Schizo is a, a shout out DJ Schizo, man. Big City DJs. He's a heavyweight in the in the business, man. Very well knowledgeable of like, you know, just how shit is supposed right. to go. And it's good that you have like those type of mentors to be able to just like mm-hmm. school you. Um, in, into that process, and more importantly, like you're actually following through. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people get told, like, here's things that you need to be doing, and they just let it go in one ear and out exactly. the other. How important to you as an artist is it for you to be able to, like, be able to take heed to a good advice? Well, one, 
you gotta know what good advice is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't even know what good advice is. Big facts. You know what I'm saying? So Big you facts. gotta be knowledgeable enough to know that, like what's good advice, what's bad advice, and then you gotta know every good advice. Every but all good advice ain't good advice because it might be good advice for them in their situation, mm-hmm. but for you it might be different because you, you know, you carry yourself a different way, you treat yourself a different way, you perform a different way. So you have to, you know, yeah, it's good to take their advice, but you 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 have to. And when you take their advice, you don't have to change it exactly what they want. You right. change it and mix it in what you want to do, you know, also. But it's good to take their advice because that's ain't doing nothing but enhance you. Most people, when they give you advice, they're trying to enhance you mm-hmm. of what you're already doing, your craft, make your craft even better. You know what I'm saying? Right. I always tell people when it comes down to advice, like, listen and apply with, exactly. apply to what makes sense to you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's, you, you do yourself a huge disservice when you just close the door, period. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know... <laughs> what elements of the advice you'll be able to benefit from. You know what I'm saying? And everybody's experience is different. You know, a DJ's perspective on artistry is way different than an artist's perspective, right? But me personally, I believe that DJ's perspective is vital because they are in tune to the people. Exactly. They're in tune to the pulse. They're like the heartbeat. Right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? They're like the heartbeat. And and when you look at like music as a whole, it's, it's, it's sort of like the human the body. body. It's, like the body. It's, it's a lot of different working parts that need to be moving together in order for it all to come together. And a lot of artists get, get caught up on just focusing on the brain or just focusing on the arm or just yeah. focusing on the heart, You're like not working on putting it all together. Right. Um, talk to us about just your overall like goals when it comes down to your music. Like what What's your goals with it, man? Like my goal is just, you know, I just want to touch the people. I just want people to know, you know, that it's real good music out here still. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not all this bubble gum bullshit out here. You know, people do rap about real shit and still got real concepts and still make real good, feel good music. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just want to uh, basically just want to change what's, what's going on in the music game right now. You know what I'm saying? It's all bullshit. Like, you don't hear it. There's no real fucking songs, dog. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, so we're we going to get into a record, man. I'm going to... Uh... Matter of fact, email me some stuff. I think I only got the last record you recorded um, with, with uh, Zeno last week. Um, <clears throat> but email me something over to admin AD. I'm going to text it to you. <clears throat> you about to make me go out my line. All right, no, no. Wait, my other phone up. We ain't going to do that. We ain't going to do that. I mean, you got other. I mean, you can always look me up, bro. SKTV's everywhere. That's what we're doing, man. That's what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? I would like to present something new, but it's cool. I mean, I can play it if you want me to play. You want to let the people hear it, an early, an early sneak peek. No, I, no, I, 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 give them, I give them an early sneak peek about the clay. How about that? You send it to me? Yeah, the email address? Yeah. Yeah, I sent it to you. <clears throat> All right, so we got Girlfriend. Talk to us about Girlfriend. Girlfriend? Yeah. Oh, my God. Girlfriend, Girlfriend. Oh, shit. Girlfriend is a... Um, Song that I was inspired by a lot of females. Okay. Um, a lot of females, you know, that I either messed up with or they messed up with me, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm the one still missing on this shit. <laughs> right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just keeping it real on that part. Uh, you know, female, it, it's, a, it's a good it's a good song. Like, if you're a real guy, like, you've been through stuff and you really got to, you know, you. You miss your shorty, you know what I'm saying? I'm going it down for you, your man, you won't feel this song. Yeah. All right, let's get into it.
the transparency in that record, man. I love how you you just showed your like true emotion. Like niggas ain't gonna admit that they missed their girl. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Especially putting it in song. You know, the first thing they gonna say is like, man, I'm damaged. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> whatever, whatever. And it's like, talk to us about why it was important for you to make a record like that. Uh, it's, it's important because it's just like you know, them be my like that's true feelings. Like people don't they scared like. Everybody ain't tough. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Right. And just because I'm from the hood don't mean I'm, I'm tough. I got a soft side too. I like I like women too. I got I got feelings too. I be I be heartbroken too. You feel me? Right. Right. And people scared to admit that. Like I'm not scared to admit that. Like that's super dope. Through that. Like you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like that make my music better. You know absolutely, I mean? absolutely. I, I I think that's a powerful record, bro. I think that's a powerful record, Thank and you. it just shows it shows your, your your creative prowess too. You know what I'm saying? Just to, again to be willing to be that vulnerable on record and put it out to the world. Like that's available right now on YouTube. We pulled that up on YouTube, man. So y'all can go pull up SKTV and check out that girlfriend video, man. Um, talk to us about power lines. Power lines, uh, that's inspired by, like, you know, my childhood, just growing up and then, you know, seeing my, my people pass away, um, R.I.P. Sebo, R.I.P. Uh, Rob, R.I.P. Nitty, you know what I'm saying? No seeing, doubt. Like, my people. We're going to get into it. So, Power Lines is a shit. Just the, the the flow, the chorus, like the whole night, man. The so that, night. that was a DJ banger on that, I, I believe. Yeah, DJ banger on Power Lines, and then you just played what girlfriend too. Yeah, you got DJ banger on there too. But shout out Fly Marshall, spaceship music. Yeah, talk to us about this spaceship music, man. Oh man, it, that that's that's a that's a new thing. You know what I mean, about to come out. It's a whole different genre of music. It got created by me. Um, Jihad and Fly Marshall. No mm -hmm. Chill Jihad. Shout out No Chill Jihad. Jihad! 
My man. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's up? Make sure y'all tap in. Make sure y'all tap in. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this spaceship music because... You know, we had had some meetings in regards right, to like, right. you know, what we was going to do with the project. You, you had some stuff that you was in the works. We was going to put together the marketing strategy and really start working out. And then, then I get a call. Like, Yo, bro, pause. Hold up. I got another direction I want to go in. Mm -hmm. Called me. was like, yo, I'm going to bring my bros through. You know what I'm saying? Let me know what you think. And y'all came through, put together a couple different jams I was working on. And the shit was amazing, bro. <laughs> it Thank was you, amazing. Thank it you. was amazing, man. And and y'all call it spaceship music. Mm -hmm. Why is y'all call it spaceship music? Because you gotta be in the spaceship to hear this shit. Mm. Like you're not gonna feel this music unless you're in a spaceship or you've been in one before. Okay, talk to us about what the spaceship means yeah. in regards to for people who who don't know what that means and if whether or not they've been in one or not. Talk to them about what they if mean. If you've been in a Hellcat, you've been in a spaceship. Okay. If you've been in a track car, you've been in a spaceship. If you've been in anything foreign that ain't American, you've been in a motherfucking spaceship. There it is. There it is. So this is just music for like the, the people want to go. Yeah. People that just got it and, and, and ready to exactly. rock out. Um, shit, y'all, y'all, I mean, not only did y'all just put together like the music, but y'all also put together one of the absolute best Stage performances I have ever seen by more than one person. Um, we had the show over at, at level, I mean, uh, over at 24. Yeah, 24. And, and y'all yeah. came through and performed. And again, dealing with a little bit of adversity because I yeah, think there was only two, one mic, right? It was mics, two, mics, two mics. Three of y'all, two mics. And y'all literally were passing the mics, doing the dance steps, staying on beat, staying on cue into where you guys came in at on the records. Like, that shit was phenomenal, bro. From from a like a, just a, a a perspective of a fan, because I'm a fan of music first. Mm -hmm. um, to to see that type of choreography, synchronization, and working through the adversity without stumbling, without you know who's who's up next missing and all that stuff there. Like, how the fuck did y'all do that? The craziest part about it, bro. We didn't practice none of that at all. The craziest part about the whole thing is was. When I got booked for that show, it was supposed to be just me. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, nah, I want to introduce the world to space music right now. Like, give them a sample. Right. Just to see what it is. So, me, literally, me and Jihad and Fly Marshall, we got in the studio. We was over there practicing our dance steps, mm -hmm. all the shit that we was going to do for the show, and practicing music. But we was practicing like we had three mics because we were told that there would be three mics. Right, right, right. You get what I'm saying? So we it was supposed to be four. Like, it was supposed to be four, actually. Right. Yeah, so. We, so we packed like we got a three mics. So we didn't have, you know, so when we got to the show and they said we only got two mics because we don't know how to hook up the third one. Right. I tried to figure it out, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. at first because I know about equipment. You know, I've been around music my whole life, so I know what it, what it right, right. Yeah, equipment work, how this work, how that works. So I'm trying to, you know, figure it out, but they didn't have the right fucking plug to do it. They mm -hmm. just needed a fucking extension to do it, but right. they didn't do it. So I'm like, I just took them in the bathroom and this is real shit. We went in the bathroom. Why y'all were there? While we were there. I swear to God, this is real, real deal. Like, we, we can ask them. We went in the bathroom, and anybody who walked in seen us. <laughs> <laughs> um, we went in the bathroom, and we practiced about having two mics and how we would pass it and how we would still do everything we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. so, now, don't get it fucked up. We made it look easy, but it was frustrating. I, I can believe it. You know what I'm saying? I can believe Y'all definitely made it look, y'all made it look seamless. I ain't gonna say it look easy. Yeah. It didn't look easy. But y'all made it look seamless where like it didn't take away. Yet. Yeah, it yeah. didn't take away from the actual performance. But I'm sitting there in total awe, like, how the fuck is this doing this? Yeah. Like this is crazy to to like like I said, I mean to see it is 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 one thing, but literally pass the mic to the next rapper, come on beat, come on right on cue. Each line though. Each line. Each. So we were going back and forth each line. It's, so. it's not like y'all had y'all had bars, like everybody had like four to eight bars. Y'all literally was going line for line, one off of another, boom, 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 all three of y'all. Yeah. That shit was amazing, bro. Thank you, bro. That shit was amazing. And just, I hope you, I, that's what I'm saying. I, that's what I'm trying to bring back. I want people to appreciate good, you know, when stuff like that, mm -hmm. like that's real music, that's real talent, that's real it takes real talent, it's real music, dedication. It takes real practice and chemistry to come up with something like that. You know, absolutely, I mean? absolutely. I hope y'all stay on the gas, man. Um, and and you know, no breaks, man. All gas, no breaks, bro. Because you definitely have something. And I feel like when 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 you see talent like that, it's just a matter of just putting it in front of audiences, man. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Just putting it in front of people exactly. who who will will look and be like, oh, these dudes is on. 
This ain't shit that you you seeing. Cause I mean, there's there's I, I'll give you a, a, a quick little situation that just came up not too long ago. I had somebody that was interested in in, in, in booking um, the new dude. Uh, what the, what the fuck is that? Boom, boom, boom. What's, yeah. what's the homie's name? I just drew a blank on his name. Um, Nardo Nardo Wick. Yeah. So they was interested in booking Nardo Wick. They said this man won eighty thousand dollars for a performance. Right? We only got two three songs, and his live performance is two. But the same songs. He don't even have a full 40 minute show. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it literally was like 80 bands for eight minutes and three of the eight minutes, two, you want to hear the same song twice. Shit was crazy. But my man that was that, that handles his bookings, he said he was having trouble getting booked because people wasn't, yeah. you know, wasn't with paying that much for that shit. And also his stage performance is terrible. <laughs> it was like he's, he's like a zombie up there. And I said, you know what? I could believe it because if you look at the video, it, it, he don't really have no performance in the in the video. So I do believe like as a consumer and as a fan of music, like people are looking and waiting for like good live performances bro. exactly you want to know what the, the instance for that was like i did it i opened up for lucci mm -hmm. um a couple years ago and um we was in the, down at a uh, club bliss okay down in dc down in dc so bliss in dc i opened up for lucci um when i opened up for lucci and i seen him he was just like He's playing his songs, and he, like, you know, I, I, I turned it up. I turned the whole crowd all the way the fuck up, mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? And to the point that everybody's screaming, yelling, they went on my name, they get my autograph, they go on my Instagram, right. you know what I'm saying? And um, he comes on, and he's, like, just rolling the blunt and shit, you know what I'm saying? And I, I'm cool with I'm cool with Lucy. That's mm -hmm. how I got on the show. Right. He, he, he seen me do a show somewhere else, and he was like, yeah, I want you to come do a open up for me at Bliss. Nice, you know what I'm saying? nice. From up that way, that's closer to where you at. Right. And I was like, cool. And I came, and you know, I do the show. I'm sitting there, back smoking on. So he go on his part, and he's just rolling a blunt, walking around, singing maybe two to three, maybe ten lyrics out of his whole song. Mm. You know, out of each song, and and and, and, and you know, I pull, I tapped it, and I said, bro, you gonna perform? Mm. He was like, you right. And he, the next four songs, he did the whole damn song. Turned up a little bit. Yeah. I think that's it. I think that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you going to perform? He was like, he looked at me like, you know, like, like who's this small fry? Like, you know, telling me I'm not going to perform. But right. But you ain't see, I'm sweating. Right. <laughs> right. My shirt ripped off. Feel me? All that. Like, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Girls are trying to pull me off the damn stage right now. Right. Feel me? Right. Get my number. And you just sitting here just rolling a blank casually saying 10 words and... You, I'm open up for you, bro. Right. You're the main performer. Right. Bro. You supposed to have this shit louder than me. You supposed to be louder than me. Mm -hmm. So I tapped him like, bro, you gonna perform? Like, like he looked at me like, <laughs> who's this nigga? He said, you right. You know what? Yeah, let me not let uh, ego get in the way. Yeah, he said you uh -huh. right. And he went and did the next four songs. He performed the whole damn song. But it was just like, I'm not cheating my fans. Like, so when you see me, if you see me out, anybody who's on my, these lives right now, watching this shit or listening to this podcast right now. Listen to this station right now. I want y'all to know that you will never be cheated. I mm -hmm. mean, I'm like LeBron. When you come out and I come out, I'm going to perform. I'm, I'm still, I'm, no matter if my team suck, I'm still putting a 33. There you go. You feel me? And that's, that's, a, that's important because I think that's a lost part of the art, a lost art um, in the process too. It's just like, you know, the overall, like everything. You go in the studio, you make great records, you know what I'm saying, the whole nine. And then you get on stage and you pretty much let the DJ, you know, run the show. And, and your body is there, but there's no emotion, emotion there's right, no feeling, right. there's no presence. I think that, and then you know, people pay a pretty penny to get in these clubs because exactly. these niggas is taxing, exactly. you know, off grip. That's what I'm saying. That's why, you know, like, two people that was like the most best performers I ever seen, the first performer I ever seen that was the best performer I ever seen who actually inspired me to perform the way I performed. Mm -hmm. is two people, it's LL Cool J, because mm -hmm. I seen him live okay. at the pavilion. Young as hell, my brother was having me on the shoulder watching him live. That's what's up. And the, he was up there by himself on the Chilling. stage, just him and the DJ, and he's rocking out, singing every fucking lyric, sweating his head off, going crazy. Mm -hmm. Then the next person I seen was DMX. Okay. Yeah, DMX last show was crazy. He performed so much, so hard. He had asthma. People don't even know. He had asthma, severe asthma. Mm -hmm. He had to take inhalers and, and get breathing treatments right after a performance or before he performed. This man wanted to perform his whole heart out. And he don't forget he was an ex crackhead. Right, ex crackhead, so, current. So, yeah, he was current too. But I'm just saying he was an ex crackhead at the yeah. time too, you know, when he was on. But I'm just saying, like, for him to do, like, that, that is power. That's right. an right. artist. That's 
showing that this record mm -hmm. matches this performance. And you, you know, know what I'm saying? One of the ones who, who did that for me early was Buster Rhymes. Yeah, I him to, too. I'm oh a, my God, he's insane. Yeah, I'm absolutely he's unbelievable. He's insane. Him and, him and Split's chemistry was crazy. Oh, it's retarded. And, and his last performance, I seen him at uh, the Civic Arena before they tore it down. And it was just like, out of everybody that was on that show, that dude had me standing, throwing bows the whole night, kicking mm -hmm. people, you know, the whole night. I, and, and I believe, like, that's a lost part of the a process, like I said. And I'm thankful that you understand the importance of that, man. And thankful that, I, I just thankful that you're here, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I believe there's a lot of great things that's going to come down the pipe for you, man, because you just got all the elements. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm thankful for this platform to be able to provide opportunities for people to, to, to connect because I'm pretty sure there are people who have seen you, who've done music with you, who, who don't understand these elements about you, who will now have an opportunity to listen, tap in, see, and, and, and catch wind of, like, the greatness that you bring, man. So, you. you know, before we get out of here, we're going to get into this pull-up, man. This is produced by Stevie B. Yeah, this is some new spacey music I wanted to premiere. Just a little bit, give y'all a little hint. Fly, it's me, Fly Marshall, and Jahad going back and forth. It's called Pull Up. Speed, it's, uh, Fly Marshall produced it. Stevie mixed it. Okay, and, okay. Uh, and, and co-produced it. It's one of them singles that's going to be coming out real soon. Shout out to Jahad, man. Space City Music. We in this bitch. Let's go. Fly Marshall. Yeah. Hey, Stevie. <laughs> Yeah, are they ready? Ah. Pull up, pop out, I got money on me. Wake up, early morning, I got money on me. And the bedroom, I got baddies with a hundred to me. Tony says she can't be, but she ain't running from me. I'll always be there when you need me. Good girl, but she love me, mistreated. Don't worry about my love like you need it. I'm gonna show you my love, don't get greedy. Shorty try to take out money, I'm a Swiss account. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. One time for SKTV, man. Let everybody know how they can tap in with you. Man, SKTV family on every platform. SKTV for us, my music. As far as Instagram, tap in with me. S-K-T-H-A-V-I-L-L-I-A-N. S-K the motherfucking villain, bitch. And then I'm in, um, you know what I'm saying? Check me out. I'm about to come go on tour soon. I got a lot of other things coming up. 
I got the space, Cloud Studios on Morova. After hours opening soon. If you want to book an event, look up Cloud Studios in Morova, 500 Garden City Drive. Shout out BG Fashion, MGE, the motherfucking bag. Different. The bag's different. The bag is fucking different, and it's coming soon. All that shit's coming. It's a fucking amazing. They don't know we got the motherfucking call. There it is. There it is, man. One time for SKTV, man. Thanks for coming down, blessing us with your presence, man. It's I mean, I learned a lot more about you, bro, and I know the world is going to definitely appreciate what you bring into the to the culture, man. So I appreciate you, my brother. Let's stay on that grind. Let's keep getting it. I mean, I know these are things I ain't got to say to you. This is just that this is just who you are, man. So uh, again, this is SKTV. For those who don't know, this man did a performance in the middle of the street in Miami in traffic. In traffic. In they traffic. <laughs> I, and I just did a performance on a billboard. Man, uh, down in uh down in the strip district, man says, shout out Buddha Badass. We're down in the strip district on a billboard. If y'all seen them crazy people on the billboard, that was me and her. There it is, man. So, you know, I, I ain't got to say nothing. I'm just I'm just going for the ride, man. I'm blessed to be in your presence, my brother. Let's Thank keep you, at man. it, man. Appreciate you. No doubt, man. It's OMG on my grind live interview interviews, man. Thanks for tapping in. There it is. My God. <clears throat> I'll have the uh I'll have the live up on YouTube, send you the link, and...